Goffman Show. We're on the Team 980. We're always live on the free Odyssey app, and we are streaming on YouTube at the Team 980 as well. And it's our pleasure to welcome back to the show, friend of the show. She's been, of course, NBC4 here in D.C., uh, Fox Sports on the sidelines for the NFL, formerly with ESPN. She's she's just Lindsay Zarniak, which is good enough for me. <laughs> Lindsay, what's up? Thanks for coming back to the show. That's maybe the coolest intro I've ever heard of myself. So thank yeah. you so much. Uh, you know, it's always great to chat with you. Um, thank you. I mean, I was thinking about all you guys yesterday, just like, oh man, if there were one day I would love to be back just in the thick of it in DC, it would be that day. I cannot believe how much went down. Yeah, it was so much. And we were just talking uh, a few minutes ago about how, you know, we, we knew the Rivera news was coming, but then you have this other thing with Bob Myers and Rick Spielman, but let's start with Ron. Like when you think back to the four years and everything that that's gone on, Ron adjacent and things he had to deal with, like, how do you try to begin to summarize? Like if you were doing the NBC four sports cast last night and you were given whatever number of short minutes you get in local TV sports, you had to try to, you know, deliver that, that 30, 45 minute long, uh, summarization or summarization of it. How would, you, how would you go about it? Oh, that just gave me chills. That's such a good question. I, I think I would, honestly, I think I would take it back even further. And I would talk about being in the room with him with four people when I was interviewing him for a sideline um, game I was covering down in North Carolina with the Panthers. And this was before he was fired there. And then finding out he was fired there. And I had a game the following week covering the Panthers and the players were just distraught and they were so distraught because I swear it felt like they had never loved a coach so much. So I would start there, but I would talk about in DC, obviously the goodwill that he has created and cultivated with the players that he coached with the coaching staff that he has. But also I would make sure to include the part about what he said, um, his statement afterwards talking about partially that he led with, I thought this was really interesting. He led with the fact that, um, during these, you know, these four years and all this stuff off the field, he actually mentioned, you know, I think in, in his quote, when he said it, that, you know, the name change, the, the, you know, management change, all of it. Like, I think he, in a way I was like, that was smart because it seemed to me that he kind of specifically mentioned all the things off the field. And obviously he was disappointed. He mentioned, you know, um, the division, obviously the, the success that he had, but I was like, okay. It is the truth that there's never been so much change in this organization during anyone else's tenure. I think you could argue that, you know, um, and he's just such a good person and good guy. And of course, the health stuff he went through, too. So I just, you know, in a way, it's kind of like there's not a better type of person that you want this to happen to because you know that he can withstand it because he is such a sensible coach. He's such a smart person. He has been there before because he was a player but he's just such a coach of men. Like I said, initially when he was hired, I really felt like it was the best thing that could have happened to that team because he was the closest thing that Snyder had had to Gibbs in a long time. And what I meant was not only a football brain and a really steady hand, but also someone that could stand up for the team to him, to Snyder a bit, you know, like to babysit in a way. Um, so I don't know. That's probably what I would say. So yes, I was, you know, I'm, I was super sad. I knew it was going to happen just like everybody else. Um, it's one of those that just sucks because you just really like the guy, but I've never been more excited to be a Washington fan, to be honest yeah. with you, because I just, I mean, the, the, what they're doing is like so shockingly different and so good on so many levels. I believe that I think that people should be really excited. Yeah. So I think uh, uh, to be very clear, what I'm about to say slash ask you is a yes and to what you just said, because I don't want to just come off like a lot of fans are going to hear that and they're going to be like, oh, Lindsay's a homer. She likes Ron. Yes, or whatever. Yes, it's yes, like, yes. you know, he led his statement by saying like, this wasn't good enough. Like it, this is the right move for the organization. Like he had no qualms about being fired. He knows that you can't go four and 13 and you can't be way under 500 like he was here and all of that stuff. Um, but on the day someone gets fired, you don't need to necessarily heart. Like we all know why. Um, so oh. I, I appreciate the, the perspective from someone who's dealt with him human to human, um, over the time. But it, what, one thing about people that have had those conversations with him and Logan talked about this, uh, on take command with me yesterday, cause he did the coaches show with him, uh, for the commander's <laughs> stuff. You just talked about hey, like how smart he was as a football person. If that's true, which I don't doubt that it is. Why did it not work on the football side of it? Because he made decisions that were very bad football decisions 
with a lot of consistency, which is how you wind up with the record that he had here. That's not being mean. That's just being factual about, you know, what it is with the results already having, you know, been decided. I agree. And the answer is, I don't know. Right. It's like <laughs> you, um, and that's, that's the truth. And it, it's like, you look at it and you look at moving parts and personnel and, you know, I, I tend to think of things too, like there are, it's a perfect storm, right? It takes a perfect storm to get to a championship level team. It takes a lot more than just the X's and O's on the field, but at the core of it, to your point, it's the, it's the X's and O's on the field. So I do not know. And maybe it is as simple as the fact that there is so much of those other things that were going on that it just became overwhelming, that it became too much to even deal with so that when you're making those decisions on the field, I, I don't know. So I think that's a really valid, valid question. I think that, you know, I, last night we're talking about it at the dinner table. Um, my son's obsessed with football. And so we're like, okay, well, what he's like, well, what happens now with, with Rivera? I don't know. I don't know. I would be, I'm curious about that. Where does he go? Does he go somewhere? How is he viewed um, to your point as a, as a leader on the field? Um, I don't know. It's a, it's a hard one to say, but that's why I think it's so important that, who they go with is not only obviously sound football, but they've got to have all the pieces. I, I think the one thing that I'm really excited about, I have covered both Spielman and Myers and I was with Spielman in Miami, right? My first job covering sports was the Miami Dolphins. I went there in 2001 and he was the vice president of player personnel. Um, he and Myers are similarly revered as just good people, but really smart, right? And like, I know with Myers, like Draymond Green, like I, I, there's so many things that he has like brought people through. And I think people leave feeling the same way about him. So I'm just not to like totally go off on a tangent, but I feel like the character development and also the piece of it that is the glue that keeps an organization together and headed in the right direction is pretty impressive in the way they're doing this. Like the other thing is I did an interview with Chris Paul a, a couple months ago and it was literally two hours after um, he found out he was traded and that was totally happenstance, right? So mm -hmm. um, that wasn't supposed to be the timing, but it makes me think about, okay, Myers, that was one of the last things that Myers did before he left, right? So the trade happy mentality of the NBA, the risk involved with doing certain things. I wonder if this could get really interesting, you know, in, in different ways that people aren't thinking about now. And I don't know, there's a lot that goes into it that I'm thinking about, but I think that, you know, it's been a long time since the Washington organization, I think has had the same type of reputation as a player's place. Did Rivera do that and, and bring people together? Yes. But it's different when you've got the GM and different leadership on board and the owner, like the owner Harris going out and doing this is so different from anything we've seen in recent history, right? Being like, I need, I want help. I want these people that are smarter than me in this regard to come in here and work to figure out these pieces. They could go and mess it up though. I mean, they, yeah. they could go and mess it up in the draft. They could, they've got to take a quarterback. Like they've got to do it smart, right? Like they've, there's so much that they have to do. I personally feel like the enemy is one of the guys that every single interview I've ever been in, where it's been a team that's been like one of the interviews before a game where I'm doing sidelines, anyone that has had them on their staff in recent history has been like, he has got to get a shot as a head coach. So I think that's an interesting, interesting one. I don't know how you feel about that. Yeah. You know, shut up. <laughs> Lindsay Tarniak is with us. I think uh, I'll respond to the BNME thing in a second. I've been fairly mm -hmm. clear that I think Eric should get a shot somewhere and I don't think it should be here. And I can unpack that uh, in a second, yep. but to kind of combine everything you just said that I think is really interesting. And like to a point going back to what I originally asked about Ron, I think he bit off more than he can chew. I don't think he knew at the time, like how big the mouthful was, if you will. And like, and nobody knew how big, quite how big it would be. He knew he bit off a lot, but you add in cancer, COVID and, the, yes. hey, this Snyder guy's pretty bad, but like all of a sudden it's investigations with Congress and stuff. And like, that's a totally different level. In January of 2020, none of us knew that was happening. So organize it to, to what Josh is doing, the organizational structure and making sure that there's the right scaffolding around all of the pieces that the GM can GM, that the coach can coach, that all those things. It seems like that is something that Bob Myers and Rick Spielman understand and are trying to bring, that Josh understands and, and wants to bring all of that. And then I think in terms of like, Eric and kind of how he fits into that equation as well is I do think there's something about just like starting fresh 
and kind yes. of this this newness to it. And I know that Eric rubs some people the wrong way in the building, and that is something that he's encountered in different places. And with different scaffolding, they're able to massage through it and work through it. And here, that was not the case. And I, I just think that he's incredibly smart. Um, the guys that know him really well, like even, even guys that don't really love him are like, he's the same guy every day. I know what to expect, and I respect that about him. And I think that can really work. I just don't know with the the, the water that's already under the bridge here if, if it's the right move to include him here in, in the list of candidates. I think that's an extremely valid point, 100%. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and I think that that's a real thing to think about. I, you know, like I'm, I, lo I love a coaching search so much and I know it's like so weird and twisted because I, I remember the Jim Zorn days and remember that situation. It was like this never ending who's who. Of, I felt like we were playing Clue. It's like, what are, what's going to happen? Um, I just think it's so interesting because right now the list is like really long. You know, if you look out there and you look at people, Raheem Morris is interesting to me. Um, I don't know how I feel. And you, you didn't even ask me this question. So I'm just going into this. No, go for it. I was going to, I was going to ask you who you like as someone who, by the way, has been in all these production meetings and talked to a lot of these guys as coordinators. I was going to ask anyway. So go ahead. I mean, Raheem Morris, I feel like I like the uh, defensive minded side. I like the fact that he is, a player's coach. I, you know, you, you hear the names, Harbaugh, Belichick. I don't, I don't know. It makes me nervous. Um, I'm with you. I would love them to get Tomlin, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I just, I don't, I don't know. What do you think? I don't think Pittsburgh fires coaches. I don't think Tomlin's unfortunately they do not, no, they don't. Like, like they would have to away. Yeah. But. I am definitely of the, the hire the offensive coach that way, even if you have success, like, if yeah. D'Amico Ryans has success in Houston and Bobby Slowick gets a job, now CJ Stroud's got a second offensive coordinator in two years, and that makes me nervous. Although CJ might be good enough that it might not matter. He might be one of those dudes. Um, but unless you hit the quarterback like that, um, replacing the OC with frequency, I, I think makes me nervous. So the Ben Johnsons of the world, Frank Smith down in Miami, um, Slowick in Houston, who they've they've requested. I think all those guys are are really interesting, but a guy like Raheem, I think is, is pretty fascinating because he has coached some offense. Like he, he sees the game globally and kind of has a perspective that I think is really valuable. And I, I'd be curious from your experience, like the head coaches that you've got the chance to talk to and cover that are successful. Like, is there a common thread amongst them, vision, communication, leadership, whatever it is that you're like, Oh yeah. All those guys have that thing. I mean, I feel like, I mean, you know, this, because you're around it every day. Like it's the, it's the, the simplest thing that it's the coachability across all things. And it's not just offense, defense, special teams, it's managing men. That's why I, this morning we were talking about it. I keep bringing my son up, but I was like, they had this graphic on sports center and he, my son like came down the stairs when he wasn't supposed to. And I was like, look at this. I was like, um, he Carroll, <laughs> Pete Carroll is one of the guys that they're looking at who has had success coming college to NFL. But I was like, it's so rare because it's a different man that you're coaching. So I think it takes someone who's got, I always tend to go defensive if you're picking one, like which, which, and I don't know why, because that doesn't necessarily make sense. But I think you've got to have, you've got to have the offensive minded expertise because especially with where they are right now and meaning Washington. Um, yeah. but I think a common thread would be it's the coachability and it's like the galvanizing. And I know that sounds cheesy because it's boring, but it's like, really, I think that's the truth. I think it's like, you've got someone who realizes that they're not smart enough in an area and doesn't try to be. And right. so get the help below where they need it brings in the person that they need six, like gives up the power where they need it. Like Bill Belichick giving up power in new England, if that's what happens, fine. But like, um, with Pete Carroll, I think one of the issues that ended up happening with Pete and Russell was Pete's system is great. Pete has this really like, fun, maniacal way of getting to his player, players. Like he will do stuff to embarrass them in front of the group in a way that's fun and ends up being funny at the end of a meeting where I think some players would be mortified and embarrassed in it, but it, it like works. So he does this stuff that's like really wild and fun. But I think after a while, that kind of thing, whereas it might really bring people together in a college atmosphere, sometimes, I don't know, I feel like Russell, I'm not trying to like make this off on a tangent even more, but 
Russell Wilson is sort of an enigma in a way, just because he's got his own thing going on. There's a lot of reasons that that did not work, that it's not working out. But I think that, I don't even remember why I said that. <laughs> I just feel like. Um, You're talk, talking about the personalities of head coaches and, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I just think, you know, it's the ones that, that know what they don't know and, and get the people to help them fill in those gaps and re really have a way to get to every single player. It's very similar to a quarterback, you know, it's, um, there's a likability factor and there's a care factor about the other people liking you. Um, I was just listening to someone talking about Lamar Jackson with that and saying that he really went out of his way early on to get his teammates to like him. You know, we hear that a lot about quarterbacks, Joe Burrow sitting with all the different guys at lunch, whatever it is. But I think there's, it really matters. And especially when you're the head coach and you've got a million things going on, a million different personalities. Um, I feel like that's the one piece you know, that a player feels like they can go to you. And if you aren't good enough and if you're not doing well enough, they're just going to shoot you straight, but do it in a way that you're not going to walk out crying. You're going to walk out and want to do better. I think that's kind of getting into the weeds of it. That's the thing. Yeah, no, I, I think that's so true. And I think my favorite thing you said there that is so important for head coaches is like, do you know what you don't know? And do you provide, and like, it's really, because in order to even have that, that thought, you have to understand what's required in the first place. And like, you know, we, we talk, we wind up talking about Kyle all the time because of his history here, because a lot of the people, including for me, Logan, my, the person that I talk football with the most, like played for Kyle for half of his career. And, you know, Santana Moss, who's an analyst in town, like he played for Kyle and all these people that just played for Kyle or covered Kyle. Um, but when Kyle got to San Francisco, he set it up so that he could be the offensive coordinator. Mike did the same thing in Miami. Kevin did the same thing in, um, uh, in Minnesota, like yes. I think Gannon, like Gannon's done a decent job of this uh, early on in Arizona. Is like, I know I got this job because I'm good at this thing. I also know that a head coach typically doesn't do that thing or historically hasn't. So I need to set up other people to do that thing so I can do my thing. And like, yeah. if you, if Pete's done that in in Seattle, and I think Bill has failed at that in New England, which is part of the reason that he's having to yeah. restructure or find another job at the age of seventy, whatever he is now. <laughs> um, okay. So this is interesting though. You just mentioned Kyle, Kyle, Kevin, Kevin O'Connell. Mm -hmm. Um, think about Matt LaFleur, right? Like I'm yep, thinking right thing, now, yeah. I am visualizing these rooms that I've been in doing interviews and they always, because we've always made the connection sitting in there like, Oh, Hey, I used to be in DC. I remember you did it up. There's something there that's interesting that I didn't really think about until you said it. Like Sean McVay, Sean, Matt, Kevin, Kyle, they all have that same sort of mentality, right? Of that type of thing that you just mentioned. So what was it in Washington that gave them that? Because they were all there sort of overlapping at a certain time. Was it Mike Shanahan? Was it, I, I don't know. I'm just saying. Yeah, I, I think Kyle's probably the biggest driver of it. And like Kevin gets it secondhand through Sean because they didn't cross here. Uh, Kevin yeah. actually like, replaced Sean, but like Kevin goes out to LA. And I remember talking to Kevin when he left here, like he was, he was not exactly sad to, instead of getting to coach under Ron here, I'll do respect to Ron to get to go work with Sean in LA. Like as someone who had future head coaching aspirations, I think he knew that that would like, that was the time when if you had had lunch with Sean McVay once you were a head coach at some point, which I was very sad because I'm still waiting on my call. Anyway, the point <laughs> is uh, like all those guys kind of learned an attention to detail, a level of organization. Um, and I think the thing, uh, Jordan Rodriguez, uh, who I'm sure, you know, uh, the, the athletics uh, Rams writer did this phenomenal series in the off season called the play callers where she really detailed how Kyle specifically would just tear apart plays and it's like, if you came to Kyle with an idea, it better work against every front, every coverage, you better have answers. And if it didn't, it wasn't going to make the playbook. And so if you come up like having to think like that, that's going to carry over for the rest of your career. And I think that's why that tree has been so successful. It's not that it's schematically superior necessarily to other stuff. It's that it's thought through with a level of detail and set up in a way organizationally that it makes it more foolproof than, than other or more fail proof than other places that aren't quite as detailed. Yeah. Because, because part of what you learned through was a fear of failing and not doing it the right way because of how tough those bosses are like Kyle. Yeah. Like, I love that. I think that's a really great point.
That's how I felt working with George Michael sometimes. Um, I'm sure. And I'm serious, but, but yeah. I've said this before. It's like that, that was a boot camp that will, no matter what, always be the best experience of my career, hands down, because I learned more there than I would have ever learned anywhere else. And I've loved my other jobs too. I've learned different things at all of them, but that one was like, okay, you know, um, anyway. No, I think yeah. that's a, that's, that's a great story and a cool place to end. Anytime we can end on a George Michael story, it's uh, <laughs> I think a good place to end a, an interview on DC Sports. God, Radio. what would he say now? He would be like, "What in the hell? <laughs> would, who would he want? Who would he want?" I I think we'd all love to know uh, that. Do you have, Do you have any guesses? Who would be Who would be his number one guy? <sighs> That's so. Hard. I can't believe I just put that on you. That's so. Cool it would be did, someone right? who George would know what Myers, he would know because he would talk to them and he would know what Myers and uh, Spielman were thinking. He would be on the phone with Spielman first and then he would talk to Myers and he would know exactly what they were thinking and why the decision needed to be probably exactly what they're circling around. I believe that, but I don't believe it would be someone who is a seasoned head coach in the NFL right now. Interesting. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe. I'm wrong. We'll, we'll um, see. I know. So hopefully sooner uh -huh. rather than later. I know. Well, what is, what is the latest time frame that you're hearing on when they're going to make a decision? I would imagine, well, they, they can't really interview anyone in person to like January 22nd. So, yeah. um, I would imagine that championship week or Super Bowl week, depending on who they're hiring, that they, uh, they get their guy and hopefully the, the GM thing is done sooner than that. But that's, that's the next month of shows, Lindsay. We're just trying to get through today. I love it. So much to talk about. So Indeed. many pieces to peel back in that onion. For sure. <laughs> Lindsay Zarniak, uh, Fox Sports, of course, NBC4, ESPN. You've seen her everywhere. Uh, a, a great journalist here in DC. Uh, always a pleasure to have you on the show and, and hopefully we have you back soon. Yes. There's so much to talk about. You're the best. Always great to talk with you. Have a great time. Enjoy it out there. And uh, yes, hope to see you soon. Hey, this is DA and you're listening to The Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.